Hey everybody, um, this is not a full video, I apologize for that. I'm really hoping that I can get a full video for you by the end of the week on a new project. And I say new project because, well, I'll show you. This of course is the affectionately named Charlie Brown snare drum shell. And the problem that we anticipated is more substantial than I thought. I expect that if I were to hold this shell by either side, and I wasn't holding the camera, that I could pop this drum apart at the seams without any difficulty at all. Like I pointed out in the last video, we've got end grain coming into long grain right here, uh, and actually all the way around. So long grain is the highlight pieces, and we have end grain, end grain, and end grain. It comes apart that easily. There was no force required whatsoever. Now I have a couple of possible solutions in mind. I'll uh, run them by you and I'd love to hear what you think. Okay, one possibility is to glue support pieces, you know, long grain going this way, you know, narrow strips, you know, use this for example, glue down sort of interior fins or supports like this. I have no idea what that would do to the sound, you know, the column of air moves up and down along the uh, distance from the top to the bottom head. Would um, fins make any difference? They would certainly add the strength that we need. Um, the other possibility is to have long grain pieces running this way and narrow, make narrow strips or veneers that followed the chevron pattern all the way around here and here. That's a possibility. The third possibility to make this, or to salvage this drum, is to do an inlaid reinforcement ring, or maybe a, you know, maybe even a couple of them, uh, that go all the way around from a nice stable wood like, you know, it could even be pine, really. Uh, it's just adding structure. So what do you think? Is it salvageable? Is it worth salvaging? It looks cool, but it doesn't seem very practical so far. I'd love to try this style again, and perhaps, um, well, I should have used some better gluing techniques to apply the end grain to the long grain. All right, that is the first thing I wanted to show you. Uh, the second thing is down here in my basement with the Helmish, or whatever we want to call this thing. There are some problems with this drum as well. So I'm not totally dissatisfied with the sound, but there are a couple of issues that I think I can fix. First, I think I mentioned this in the original video for the, for the drum. Uh, the hoop chokes up a little bit on the cables or the, the, the attachments for the, the snare strands, or the snares. So I need to carve this back just a little bit to allow better passage, uh, easier, smoother passage between the, hoop, between the hoop and shell and the snare itself. That's easy. Also, I think that the uh, walnut reinforcement ring on the inside is, 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 too, th is too thick. Um, and so I want to shave that back a little bit. It is adding plenty of strength. I mean, the maple reinforcement is adding strength. The walnut is adding strength. And I think with how thick it is, it's just a little bit much. For those of you who've watched the entire series of the build on the Helmish, if you have other thoughts, I would love to hear them. Once I've addressed the problems with the Helmish, it is going to go up for auction on eBay. That is the third thing I wanted to show you. This is a massive chunk of African black wood. It weighs more than any chunk of wood I've ever, well, any single chunk of wood I've used on, on this channel? Yeah, I think so. It's um, big and heavy and severely flawed. I think that's why the buyer was able to get it so inexpensively. Lots of cracks running through it. I think there are other in interior cracks and checks. 
Um, the plan is to get a single 14 by 8 shell out of this. That should be plenty of wood to do it, but it depends on what I find when I start breaking it down. I'm really excited about that one. Uh, I worked with a little bit of African blackwood on the Bacot snare drum uh, a couple years ago, and working with it was really, really cool. It's extraordinarily dense and heavy, and uh, just I just worked with little pieces of it. Really, it's, its workability was similar to the Catalox, um, but more like milling plastic than milling wood. Uh, so I, I'm really eager to see how it turns out. It's the same kind of wood used for high-end uh, high-end oboes and clarinets. So it's it's really um, a, a well-used tone wood. I don't know how that will translate to a drum shell, but this thing's going to go all the way to full snare drum with hoops, heads, hardware, and everything, and a really uh, and two really interesting design features, which I'll show you along the way. Hopefully, I'll have the video for getting that put together or, or getting the 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 blank the shell blank glued up 20 staves 8 inches deep each um, my hope is to get that video out by sometime over the weekend obviously I haven't started it yet I've got a couple things I need to do before I can dig into that not least of which is clean up my workspace I'm not done yet with the trample with the trampoline. <laughs> I'm not done yet with the swing set. But we're getting there. Uh, my goal is not to get the roof put on this weekend, but I do need to finish the banisters on the top level so that my kids can go up and have fun up there. So that's it for this very short update video. Um, again, hopefully I'll have something more substantial for you this weekend. Take care everybody. Love to hear what you think about uh, the problems and the projects that are coming and I'll see you soon. Bye.